Ji, uh, I see uh, that Mulana Khil Shah Saab has joined us uh, for today's session. Thank you so much for joining us. You are currently on mute. So uh, I'll go ahead and start with Tilawat of Quran Majid in English, Surah Fajr. I'll be having, be taking the honor to trans, read the translation of first five ayats. Al-Fajr, the daybreak, in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, by the daybreak, by the ten nights, by the even and the odd, by the night when it departs, verily there is in this an oath for those who understand. Uh, with this, I will invite Molana Khil Shah Saab to uh, start his speech on natural balagha for us. Uh, before we, uh, before you begin, Molana, I just wanted to share the news, the message about uh, Dr. Sheba Rizvi's wife. Uh, she has, uh, she's doing quite well, alhamdulillah. Uh, Mustafa Moswi Sahab and I spoke to him yesterday. Uh, and uh, he's in a lot, his wife is in a lot better position than she was an hour, a day ago. And that is such a great news. He appreciates and thanks to everyone for their du'as. Uh, may I now request Janab Akhil Shah Saab to begin his speech. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. أعوذ بالله سميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي لا يبلغ مذهته الكاهلون ولا يحصي نعماءه الآدون ولا يعدي هكه المجتهدون الذي ليس لصفته هد محدود ولا نعت موجود ولا وقت معدود ولا أجل ممدود فتر الخلائق بقدرته ونشر رياها برحمته ووتد بسخور ميدان أرضه الصلاة والسلام وتهية والإكرام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا وتبيب نفوسنا وشفيء زنوبنا ومولانا أبي الكاسم مصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ابن أمه وبسيه وبزيره أمير المؤمنين وقائد الغر المواجلين علي ابن أبي طالب ولا أولاده المحسومين ولعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين من الآن إلى كيام يوم الدين أما بعد قال أمير المؤمنين علي ابن أبي طالب عليه الصلاة والسلام في نجو البلاغة في كلمات الكسار بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اغتنموا الفرص فإنها تمر مر صهاب صدق مولانا ومقتدانا أمير المؤمنين علي ابن أبي طالب عليه الصلاة والسلام صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Dear and respected elders the community members Mu'mineen, Mu'minat. Today, our session is about Najwal Balagha. We want to discuss how Najwal Balagha is made easy for us. This book is the book of Imam alayhi salam, and it is very easy to understand. The only thing which we need is to ponder, to give some time, and read the book carefully, with attention, with sharah, explanation, and tafsir, interpretation of this great 
book. Let me tell you in the beginning about the importance of the book. And then I have selected a few short sayings of Amir al-Mu'mineen al-Salam from Najib al-Balagha about seizing the opportunities. How to seize the opportunities. Opportunities comes to us, they knock on our door. We need to grab them, we need to take them. We need to take advantage from the opportunities. This will be our topic for today. But as an introduction, let me tell you how important is this book. The book is compiled by Allama Sayyid Sharif Razi, Rahmatullah Alay. He was from the lineage of Imam Musa al Kazim alayhi salam. So he was from Sadat al Musavi, Sadat al Kazimi. And his family tree reaches Imam Musa al Kazim alayhi salam in the sixth generation. So he is very near to the time of the 12th Imam alayhi salam. After Ghaiba, Ghaibatul Sogra and Kobra, Sayyid Sharif used to live in Baghdad with his elder brother, Sayyid Murtaza Alam al Huda, who was also a merger. Sayyid Murtaza Alam al Huda was the teacher of Sheikh Tusi Rahmatullah Alayhi. And both these brothers are buried near the Haram of Imam Musa al-Kazim al-Islam in Kazimain, Kazimiyya. And their grave and their tomb shrine is well known. It's just near the Haram of Imam al-Kazim al-Islam. Sayyid Sharif Razi, Rahmatullah has compiled this book and it has three parts. The first part of the book is the khutbahs, the sermons of Amir al-Mu'mineen al-Islam. The second part is maktubat, letters of Amir al muminin alayhi And the third part of Najwar Balagha are kalimatul kisar, short sayings of the commander of faithful. These are the three divisions and topics of Najwar Balagha. About the Najwar Balagha, it is said that kalamul imam Imamul Kalam. What a beautiful sentence. How beautifully this book is explained. What, is, what does it mean? It means that this book, which is called Nejul Balaga, is Kalamul Imam, is the sayings of Imam, sayings of the Mirul Mu'inasra. Wa Imamul Kalam. And at the same time, it is leader of all the Kalam. Dun al Quran, except Quran. Except Quran, this is the greatest book. This is Imam and leader of all the books. And one more thing about the book it says that this book is the greatest book ever written by makhluk, by creatures those who are created, makhluk, those who are created. And among those who are created, this is the greatest. But tahta kalam al-khaliq, fawqa kalam al-makhluk, wa tahta kalam al-khaliq. This natural balagha is the best book written by those who are created by Allah, but it is less than the book of Allah, which is Holy Quran. So basically we can say in easy words for our youth and our children, that Quran is the book which is, which, which, where there is no error, which is miracle, mu'jaza, and the book, the most authentic book, the Holy Quran. After Holy Quran, the most authentic book, in all the senses, eloquency, contents, and other things is Najul Balara. I have the translation 
and the Arabic version of this Najul Balagha with me. This is the first volume of Najul Balagha. The first volume of Najul Balagha in Arabic and English. And this is the second volume. Just see that how beautiful is this book. The book is translated in English by a famous scholar and uh, published by Ansarian Publications in Qum. The person who translated this is Rizwi. And this book seven hundred pages in the first volume, seven hundred pages. And in the second volume, we can see that in the second volume, there are 809 pages. 809 pages in the second volume. This book is also called Akhul Quran the brother of Quran. And this is the book in which Amir al-Mu'amineen has taught us the real Tawheed, the real oneness of Allah. If this was, if Najul Balagha was not there, the people would not be aware about, the people would not be aware what is in this book, what is Tawheed. So basically Amir al-Mu'amineen in a very nice and beautiful way, he has taught us Tawheed. Now I started my khutbah, the sermon. Usually, uh, you know that when we are, when we give lecture, we deliver lecture, we start that with the praising of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with khutbah. So following the tradition, I also did the same. I started with the khutbah. Now this khutbah which I started now is the first khutbah of Najul Balagha, the first sermon of Amirul Mu'minin in which in a very beautiful way Amirul Mu'minin praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah allazi la yablughu milhatahu al-qa'idu wa la yuhsi na'ma'ahu al-adun وَلَا يُعَدِّي هَكَهُ الْمُجْتَهِدُونَ أَلَّذِي لَيْسَ لِسِفَتِهِ هَدٌ مَحْدُودٌ وَلَا نَعْتٌ مَوْجُودٌ وَلَا وَقْتٌ مَعْدُودٌ وَلَا أَجْرٌ مَمْدُودٌ فَتَرَ الْخَلَائِكَ بِقُدْرَتِهِ وَنَشَرَ رِيَاهَ بِرَحْمَتِهِ وَوَتَّدَ بِسَفُورِ مَا يَلَانَ أَرْضِهِ Now go and see the translation. If I do the translation of this beautiful first sermon of Najul Balagha, I might not be able to finish my topic, which is today's topic. But I invite all of you, it's easy to understand. It's easy to know the sermons of Nanjul Balagha. English translation is there. Molana Murhum Mufti Jafar Hussain of Pakistan, he translated Nanjul Balagha in a beautiful way in Urdu. It is present everywhere. The translation of Mufti Jafar Hussain is a famous translation of Najul Balagha. Go and read what is the, the theme and what, is, what are the messages in this Najul Balagha for all of us, especially for our youth. This is a book which needs to be pondered, needs that the people should ponder over it and take Le lessons from this 
especially our youth and our children to take lessons from this book, Nejul Balan. Now the short saying which I recited after my khutbah is from kalamat e kisar of Najwal Balagha in which Amirul Mu'minin alayhi salam beautifully says Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim e ghatanimul furus that is seize opportunities fa innaha tamurru marra sahab if you will not grab the opportunities if you if you will not take advantage of the opportunities which comes to to your door which knocks your door then they will pass away and they pass away very quickly like the clouds pass away you see if you look towards the sky you will see that clouds are there cloud comes but then in a minute or two the clouds pass away it goes away tamurru sahab sahab means clouds when the opportunities comes to you take advantage of the opportunities because these opportunities will not remain there forever it will go away before it go away grab it take advantage of these opportunities now this is message of amirul mu'minin alayhi salam to all of us and from this the message which i learned and i want to share this with the youth is that my dear youth when opportunities comes to you grab it don't waste your time otherwise it will pass away now i will mention some of these opportunities which we have everyone have and how we take advantage from it if we will not take advantage then they will pass away and there will be nothing in our hands the first opportunity which everyone must avail is youthfulness that is in arabic we say shabab in urdu we say jawani no jawan jawan this is an opportunity when a person is youth he's full of energy he's full of strength he's full of power but it passes away very quickly youth youthfulness comes a person is a youth but then he realizes very soon that now he the youthness has passed the youthfulness has passed and there is he is no more shabab he is no more jawan he is no more a youth this youthfulness when a person is youth when a person is in adolescence in the stage of adolescence he can do many things why because his health is good and he has ambitions and he can do many things in this time period but once this time period passes away then you will see that he becomes weak he becomes old aged before he used to pray salatul lail because it was easy for him to pray salatul lail and he should uh, leave his bed in the in the middle of the night and stand for salat now he is old he has pain he has arthritis he has other problems which he has and there are other medical issues with him which prevents him from praying which prevents him from doing many things so seize this opportunity the opportunity of being youth number 2 seize the opportunity of learning allah has given you this opportunity the hadith of the holy prophet min al mahdi ila allah utlub al ilm min al mahdi ila allah acquire knowledge from cradle to grave there is no time for learning there is no period for learning talab al ilm fariza to acquire knowledge is obligation it's obligatory ala kulli muslim wa muslima on every muslim man and on every muslim women it's an obligation it's fariza farz so the person should take this advantage of learning he should seize this opportunity tomorrow it might be late and he will not be able to 
to do his studies. But now is the time to acquire the high degrees. Which knowledge? Which learning? Every knowledge, every learning, which is for the benefit of the people. For the benefit of the community. For the benefit of himself. For his grave. For his akhirah. For his hereafter. Any kind of knowledge. Again, example from Najul Balag. Amir al-Mu'mineen salam took his companion and his student, Kumail, and he gave him a advice. Kumail asked him, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, tell me what is the preference of knowledge or the wealth? Ilm wal mal. There are two things, money, wealth, and ilm, knowledge. Which one is better? And how ilm is preferred over the wealth? Amir al gave seven examples where he told Kumail and, uh, and, and all of us about the importance of knowledge or the importance of acquiring and having wealth. He says, Al ilmu abzulu min al mal bisaba'a. Knowledge is better than wealth for the following seven reasons. Al awwal, number one, Andahu mirasul anbiya wal malu mirasul fara'ina. Ilm is the inheritance of the prophets, while wealth is the inheritance of pharaohs. Fara'ina is the plural of Fir'aun. Pharaohs, Fir'aun used to acquire knowledge. They were about acquiring mal and wealth. The goal of Pharaoh's were to acquire mal, dawlat, and money. While Ambiya, they were about acquiring knowledge. Ambiya salam wanted to have knowledge Pharaohs wanted to have wealth. Athani, al ilmu la yankoso bin nafaka, wal malo yunkoso biha. The second preference of knowledge or the wealth is that when you spend knowledge, it increases, while when you spend the wealth, it decreases. See the difference. If I have knowledge, a little bit knowledge, and I'm giving it to you, I'm sharing it with you. My knowledge is increasing. By spending, I'm gaining. But wealth, when it is spent, it decreases. Asalis, yahtajul mal ila al hafiz. Wal ilmu yahfizu sahibu. If you have wealth, you need to protect them. Wealth needs a protector. Why knowledge is a protector of the person who has knowledge. So wealth needs a protector. Why knowledge protects its the person who has knowledge. The ilm is the protector. Arabi al ilmu yasro fil kafan wayabkal mal. Your knowledge will enter with you in your coffin, in your grave. It will help you in grave after death. While your wealth will remain outside of the grave, it's not going to help you. Mal dollars is not going to help for your akhirat and your hereafter. Knowledge will help you in your hereafter. Al khamis, the fifth, al malu yahsulu lil mu'min wal kafir, wal ilmu la yahsulu illa lil mu'min. Wealth can be acquired by a believer, a mu'min, and an unbeliever. A kafir. We see that wealth is with the mu'min also and with the uh, non-Muslims and, and uh, unbelievers. But ilmu la yahsulu illa lil mu'min. But knowledge, the real knowledge is only for the mu'min. Yes, we see that some unbelievers also might have knowledge, but that is not the real knowledge. This is called information. Why? Because al-ilmu nurun. Ilm, knowledge is power. 
which is given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is given on the heart of the person, the real knowledge. This is power, al ilmu nurun. While information, yeah, there, there, there will be many people who will, there, there are scientists who are unbelievers, who are atheists. They have knowledge, but that knowledge is not real knowledge. That is the information. If a big scientist, for example, let's take the example of Darwin. So Darwin was a scientist, but in my opinion, he was not an alim. He was not a learned person. He had information, but he didn't have real knowledge because he did not believe in Allah, the creator of the world. He was not uh, a believer of the oneness of Allah. He said Allah doesn't exist. So whatever knowledge you have, if you don't believe in Allah, you are, in my opinion, you are not alim. This is the meaning of that knowledge is only for mu'min, while wealth is for mu'min and ghairi mu'min, both. As-sadis, al-ilmu yukwi rajul ala al-mururi ala sirat wal malu yamna'u. Knowledge helps you to pass the bridge, the sirat, fully sirat. While wealth will stop you from passing on the bridge because you will be stopped and you will be told that how you acquire your wealth, how you spend it, give us all the account. While if you are a learned person, you are a knowledgeable person, you will just run away on sirat and you will be on the other side of the bridge. So when you have knowledge, it's easy for you to just cross the Puli Sirat, the bridge of Sirat. And if you are wealthy, you have, um, you have wealth, it's not bad to have wealth. Yes, it is good, but in the halal way. Because the commander of faithful says, Wafi halaliha hisabun. Wafi haramiha ikabun. <clears throat> if you acquire wealth in the halal way, you have to give accountability. You have to give all your, you have to show all your accounts. You have to give your money trail. And if you have acquired wealth from uh, the, the sources which are not good, from haram way, from illegal sources, then you will have to face the punishment. Wealth acquired in halal way has hisab. Wealth acquired in haram way has ikab. Hisab, accountability. Ikab, punishment. as the seventh. Jamiyu nas yuhtajuna ila al-alim fi amri deenihim wa la yuhtajuna ila sahib al-mal. Every person needs an alim to know about his religion. He needs a learned person who can teach him and, and tell him about the affairs of the religion. But not all the people needs a wealthy person. Why? Because the wealthy person is wealthy for himself. A person who has wealth, that is good for him. He's not going to give his wealth to you and to me. This wealth is good for him. So the people might not need him. And if the people need something help and they go to a wealthy person, he might help them and he might refuse and say, no, sorry, I don't want to help you. But every person needs an alim in order to know about his religion. Example is from the Holy Quran. Karun was a wealthy person. Quran has mentioned him. He was at the time of Musa alayhi salam. Someone told him, Karun, your cousin is ill. Why don't you go there to see him? He said, well, I don't want to see him because he is in poor condition. If I go there, he might ask money. And I don't want to help him. I don't want to give him money. Karun was so wealthy person, but he was not ready to give a single penny to another person to help him. So this is the preference of knowledge or wealth. 
brothers, respected sisters, youth, take this opportunity. See, is the opportunity of learning. This is the time to learn. This is an opportunity. Number three, third opportunity. The third opportunity is Allah has given us scholars and ulama. Among us, there are scholars and ulama. This is an opportunity. Go and quench your thirst of knowledge from these ulama. <coughs> the presence of ulama, alhamdulillah, in abundance everywhere is an opportunity. There was time that in the Western countries, there were only few ulama scholars, one or two. And the people were not able to go and ask them questions, sit with them and quench the thirst of their knowledge. Even 40, 50 years ago, the people who migrated to West, they, they, there was no one to recite much less. So the people would uh, take a cassette recorder, tape recorder, put the cassette, <clears throat> and they will listen to the majalis in audio, no video. Audio, cassette recorder majalis. Now, alhamdulillah, in each country, in the West, East, everywhere in the world, scholars are there. Don't leave them go unless they answer your questions. Be in touch with them. Talk to them. Call them. Visit them. And ask questions from them. Unless and until you are satisfied, keep on asking. This is an opportunity, the best opportunity. And a scholar will answer your questions in a few minutes. If you want to learn that by yourself, you might need hours and hours, books and books. Now, you don't have books. You don't know Arabic. You don't know Farsi. You don't know the other languages. You know your mother tongue. Beside that, you know one or two other languages. But most of the Islamic resources are in Arabic and Persian. Scholars know these languages. The scholar has spent 50 years, 60 years of their lives doing research. So take advantage of their research. Ask them questions. Scholars among us is opportunity. Luqman al-Hakim, Luqman the wise, has a beautiful advice for his son. Some of these advices are mentioned in the Holy Quran. There is a surah in the Holy Quran called Surah to Luqman. Luqman the wise, Al-Hakim. He says to his son, Al-ilmu kathir wal umru qasir. Now see, the beauty of Arabic language. Kathir means more. Qasir with qaf, sad, means less. Pronunciation is different. If you pronounce it in the proper way, you will say al ilmu kathir wal umru qasir. That is, Luqman is saying, my son, knowledge is very vast. It's like ocean. While your lifespan, your age is qasir, small, little. Knowledge is more while uh, the age and the lifespan is qalil, is kasir, is short. So take this opportunity. Number four, the last one, the last opportunity. There, there are many opportunities. I just want to uh, discuss uh, four points. The fourth point is the opportunity of serving the community. Allah the Almighty has given this fursa. Arabic is called fursa, opportunity. Plural is khurus, opportunities. Allah has given this opportunity to me and you to serve our community. Before this opportunity goes away, like the clouds goes away, we should take advantage of this opportunity of serving the community and society. We have 
responsibilities to our community. Saying, I don't care, it's not related to me, I'm not interested, these are not options. To remain idle is not an option. Stagnation is not an option. You have to move, you have to work, you have to serve in different capacities. A person is a poet. He should serve the community, educate the community through his poetry. Another person is an author. He should serve the community by writing books. Another person is an orator, khatib. He should serve his community by going here and there, preaching, delivering lectures, giving lectures to the people. He should serve the community by his oratory. A person is a scientist. He should serve his community through his capacity. But if I say, oh, I, I don't care, it's not related to me, I will just go sit in the Imam Barga, Hasaniya Mosque, pray my salat, listen to the lecture and go away. That means that the opportunity of serving the community which Allah has given to you, you are not taking advantage of that. You are wasting that capacity which Allah has given to you. You are not using your opportunity. A beautiful saying from the third Imam, Imam al Hussein, alayhi salatu wa salam, salu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. He says, wa alamu inna hawaij nas ilaykum min ni'amillah. Wa alamu. That is, all people learn that the, when the people come to you with their problems, in order to solve their problems, this is the blessing of Allah, which Allah has sent you through a person who is asking help from you. <clears throat> Don't consider, consider it as burden. It is not burden. This is blessing of Allah. He has brought his hajjah. He has brought uh, to you and he's asking help, coming to you for asking help is ni'mat, is blessings of Allah. So seize this opportunity. And a person should not be late. Usually, my respected brothers, we are late comers. Everywhere we are late. But when it comes to serving the community, don't be late. Why? Because this opportunity is very short. It goes away. Serve the capacity, serve the community, whatever capacity you have. A person is good in cooking. He should serve and prepare niyaz and food for the people, mu'mineen. Prepare iftar for the people in kitchen. Some person is good in cleaning. He should clean the house of Allah. He should clean the house of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. And there is reward for, for it. For everything, there is reward. Serving the community is the best thing which a person should avail this opportunity and he should uh, serve his community with whatever Allah has given to him. A person is very wealthy person. His medical condition is not good. He cannot help, but he can help the community with his money. He should do give donation so that the cause of Islam should go and spread and it should not stop there. A beautiful hadith from uh, the sixth Imam. And with this hadith, I will uh, end uh, today's lecture, and then the floor will be open for question and answer. Imam alayhi salam says, the sixth Imam, that my Shia is the one who is the best in everything. If in a community, if in the community of pious people, there are many people who are pious, but the most pious should be the one who is my follower. And the people should say, look, he is, he is pious. He has piety, he has taqwa. Why? Because he is the follower of Jafar ibn Muhammad. 
and just makes me happy when the people say he has more piety because he's Shia. My followers should be on the top of all the learned people. He should be more learned than everyone. This makes me happy. And then he says, don't bring embarrassment for us. Don't embarrass us. Bring honor for us. Bring honor for us. When you do good deeds and the people say he's doing good deeds because he's a follower of Imam Sadiq, it makes us proud and it brings honor for us. Yeah, we feel proud of our sheep. And don't do things which are bad things so that the people should attribute, look, he's doing these bad things. Oh, because he's Shia. No, Shia should be on the top of everything. When it comes to learning, he should be on the top. When it comes to taqwa, he should be on the top. When it comes to serving the community, he should be on the top. Brothers, serving community is very important. This is the greatest opportunity which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. At the end, as these are the days of the milad of Imam Rabbala and you can see in the background of this Zoom meeting, there are flowers and curtains. This is because we are celebrating the birth of our eighth Imam. This is called the 10th day, 10 days of Karama, dignity, because two dignitaries were born in these 10 days. Sayyida Fatima Masuma Salamu Alayha on the 1st of Zul Qa'da. And yesterday, 11th of Zul Qa'da was the birth anniversary of Imam Rada. 10 days of celebration, 10 days of dignity, dignity, uh, dignity, because two dignitaries were born in these 10 days. Imam Rada is Imam al Ra'uf is Alim Ali Muhammad. Today, there are 18,000 people who are serving his cause in the haram of Imam Raza There are 18,000 khuddam, servants of Imam Raza Among these 18,000, there are retired engineers, retired doctors, retired police officers, retired army officers, ordinary people, learned people. Everyone wants to serve Imam Raza by serving in the Haram of Imam Raza means serving the community. Thousands and thousands of people visit the Haram of Imam Raza Salam. Khudam and servants are needed there. You go for Ziyara, you want to give your shoes to the person who should take care of your shoes. A retired engineer is there to help you. A doctor, retired doctor is there to help you. The people feel proud just to clean the haram of Imam Rada 18,000 khuddam, 18,000 servants serving the community and society in one place in Mashhad al-Muqaddas in the haram of Imam Rada alayhi salatu wa salam. Wa dawana. أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Oh Allah, we ask you to accept this worship, this ibadah in the form of lecture about Najul Balaga from all of us. Oh Allah, those who are ill, give them quick recovery. Oh Allah, those who are sponsored of today's milad today's lecture, O Allah, increase their halal sustenance. O Allah, shower your mercy on our marhumin, especially the marhumin of the sponsors of today's majlis. O Allah, send the imam of our time, Imam al hujjah as soon as possible, and count us among his followers and friends. And especially for the marhumin of sponsors of 
today's session, Rahimallahu man kara'a, Surah Al-Mubarakah Al-Fatiha ma'as salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa alibah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alim. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, ma'alik ya umid din, hiya kalamatu wa hiya kalasani. Ihdina surat al-Mustafi wa salat al-Azina al-Azina. Rayyaki al-Mazubi alayhim malazzali. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ahli Muhammad wa ajjil farajah. Jazakallah. Thank you, Maulana Saab, for today's lecture. We really appreciate you joining us in spending this time on Najul Balagha with us. Let's open the floor for any questions, any discussions that we'd like to have. Uh, so participants, be, please feel free to unmute your mic and share any, any of your thoughts with us. تمام جن کو دعا صحت کی ضرورت ہے صحت کے لیے اگر آپ دعا کروا دیں جی بالکل دعا صحت اور شفا کے لیے احمد خان رحمۃ اللہ فرماتے ہیں کہ آئے کریمہ اما یوجیب کی پانچ مرتبہ تلاوت کی جائے اور اس کے بعد جو ہے جو مومنین مومنات مریض ہیں ان کے لیے دعا کی جائے وہ دعا قبول ہوتی ہے آئیے مل کے پانچ مرتبہ آئے کریمہ اما یوجیب پڑھتے ہیں بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم امن یجیب المضطر اذا دعاه ويكشف السوء 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 بار اللہ تو جو واسع نایات کریمہ کا جو بھی مومنین اور مومنات مریض ہیں بیمار ہیں ان کو سے شفا کامل عطا فرما بالخصوص برادر محترم ڈاکٹر شبی کی وائف ان کی زوجہ مریض ہیں بار اللہ اس کو سے شفا کامل عطا فرما تو جو واسع تیرے عزت و جلال کا جہاں کہیں بھی مومنین اور مومنات پریشان حال ہیں ان کی پریشانیوں کو دور فرما بعض لوگوں نے التماع سے دعا کے لیے کہا ہے کچھ کینسر کے مریض ہیں کچھ شوگر کے پیشنٹس ہیں انہوں نے خصوصی طور پہ التماع سے دعا کے لیے کہا ہے بار اللہ ان تمام مومنین اور مومنات جو مختلف بیماریوں میں مبتلا ہے مجھے واسطہ بیماری کر بلا امام زین العابدین کا ان کو سیر شفائی کامل عطا فرما ان کے بدن سے ہر قسم میں درد کو اور بیماری کو دور فرما آمین یا رب العالمین وانتا سمیع العلیم بحق محمد و آلہ طیبین تاہی اللہم صل علی محمد و وبرکاتہ بس آپ سے ایک ہی سوال تھا وزن کہ یہ کہتے ہیں کہ هو الذي بعث تلمين رسولا منهم يتلو عليهم آياته ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة فإن کے حاصل کرنے سے پہلے یا علم آنے سے پہلے بغیرے آنے آیت میں جو کہنا ہے کہ وزكيهم کہ پرغمبر اکرم پہلے ان کا تسکیہ نفس کرتے ہیں اور اس کے بعد کہ علمهم الكتاب والحكمة تو جو نفس پاک نہ ہو جو نفس کا تسکیہ نہ ہو اور اس نفس کے اندر علم جاتا ہے آغازہ تو یہ کہ یہ علم ہے جو معرفت میں بدل سکتا ہے یا صرف جس انفرمیشن ہے جیسے فلڈ ہے آج کل معلومات میں لوگوں کے پاس وہ لوگ جو ہے اپنی ٹائم پاس کے لیے اور اپنے ہابی کے لیے آج کل جو ہے علم کی جو باتیں جو ہے اس سے ٹرانسفر کرتے ہیں 
लेकिन इसमें कोई वाकई मकसद नहीं होता है कि इसमें उनका जिससे नफ्स भी हो रहा है उनकी अपनी जिम्मेदारियां भी पूरी हो रही हैं जैसे आपने चारों को चुनी तो उसको अपने बेहतर अंदाज में पैदा किया कि इल्म हासिल करने के बाद इल्म कि इल्म जो है वो अमल को अमल के लिए दावत देता है बस इसी का एक ही मुआवजा था कि तस्की नफ्स के बारे में अगर हमारा नफ्स पाक ना हो कि वो वो जर्फ जो इसमें इल्म जा रहा है अगर वह जल्फ जर्फ पाक ना हो तो वह इल्म का कमाल हासिल नहीं होगा इसी के जरिए तो बहुत फायदा बिल्कुल आपने अच्छी बात की और अच्छा तजुकर और रिमाइंडर है ये जो आपने आयत का हवाला दिया सूर जुमा में हम पढ़ते हैं नमाज जुमा भी जो हम पढ़ते हैं मुस्ताब उसमें सूर जुमा की तिलावत की जाए उसका उस आयत में इर्शाद होता है बिस्मिल्लाते हैं उसके बाद वाहिकमा तस्किया का मतलब है साफ करना अपने आप को साफ करना अपने दिल को साफ करना अपने अपनी रूह को साफ करना और आपने बड़ी अच्छी मिसाल दी कि अगर किसी जर्फ में आप कुछ सामान रखते हैं पानी रखते हैं खाना रखते हैं मगर वो जर्फ वो कंटेनर अगर साफ नहीं है तो वो खाना भी खराब हो जाएगा पानी भी खराब हो जाएगा क्योंकि जिस जर्फ में जिस कंटेनर में आपने उसको रखा है वो पाक नहीं है इंसान भी ऐसा ही है इंसान को आप एक कंटेनर जर्फ के तौर पे लें अगर उसमें तस्किया नफ्स नहीं है तो इल्म तो उसके पास है इसी सूरत में कहते हैं कि गधे पर आप किताबें लाद दें तो उससे आलिम गधा आलिम तो नहीं हो सकता ये भी सुरह जुमा की आयत है तो आप जो है किसी पर एक एक गधा है एक जानवर है गधा जिसको कहते हैं वो स्टूपिड जानवर है उस पर आप किताबों का बोझ डालें उस पर आप किताबें रखें 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 मगर उन किताबों की वजह गधे के लिए कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ता कि कौन सी किताबें क्या है वो उसी तरह स्टूपिड ही रहेगा क्योंकि उसके जो उसमें वो सलाहियत नहीं है लिहाजा इंसान को चाहिए कि अपने अंदर वो सलाहियत लाए इल्म को हासिल करने की इल्म को समझने की और वो तस्किया से आती है मैं एक और मिसाल दू शैतान इमलीस आ, उसके पास इलम भी था इबादत भी थी छह हजार साल की बात अमीर सलाम का नजुलबलागन छ हजार साल इबादत शैतान की मगर फिर भी वो रजीम है रिजेक्टेड नेगलेक्टेड निकाला हुआ रंद दरगाह क्यों क्योंकि तस्किया नहीं था इल्म तो थी इल्म तो था मगर तस्किया नफ्स नहीं था नफ्स की पाकिजगी नहीं थी रूह की पाकिजगी नहीं थी इतनी सी बात नहीं समझा कि कह तो रहा है कि मैं सिद्धा नहीं करूंगा क्योंकि मैं उसे बेहतर हूं मगर ये नहीं देख रहा कि सिजदे के लिए तो आदम के लिए कहा गया कि आदम को सिजदा करो मगर ये नहीं देख रहा कि कौन कह रहा है कि सिजदा करो उसकी अजमत को तो देखो जो तुम्हें हुक्म दे रहा है उसकी अजमत की खातिर तुम आदम को सजदा करो और ये चीजें कि भाई अना खैर मिन हो खलक तो नहीं मिन नार हो खलक तो मिन तीन मैं उसे बेहतर हूँ मेरी खिलकर आग से हुई उसकी खिलकत मट्टी से हुई है तुम्हें क्या पता तुम्हें क्या पता है कि नार बेहतर है खल ये तो अल्लाह का डिपार्टमेंट अल्लाह इसको बेहतर जानते हैं मैं आखिरी बात कहूँ उसके बाद दो, दोस्तों के दूसरे जो सवाल हैं वो, वो वो भी मैं लूँ मैं मेरी तालब इलमी का जमाना था मैं हौज इलमिया कुम में पढ़ता था मुझे शहादत नसीब हुई आ, इमाम खुमैनी रहमत रजवान के साथ मुलाकात करने की पूरा ग्रुप गया पंद्रह शाबान का दिन था विलाज इमाम जमान आसमाम थे हम गए वहाँ और इमाम आसमाम ने वहाँ दर्श दिया और हम सब बैठ के वो सुन रहे थे एक जुमला उस दर्श का और ये दर्श अभी रिसेंटली उसके एक क्लिप तीन मिनट का साढ़े तीन मिनट का क्लिप वायरल भी हुआ है सोशल मीडिया इमाम फरमाते हैं इमाम खुमैनी रहमत फरमाते हैं कि कभी कभार इल्म फिक आपको जहन्नम की तरफ ले जाएगा कभी कभार इल्म तफसीर आपको जहन्नम में डाल देगा कभी कभार ऐसा भी हो सकता है कि इल्म हदीस आपको जहन्नम के अंदर ले जाए लेकिन एक चीज है जो आपको जहन्नम से बचा सकती है इल्म फिक इल्म उसूल इस इस इल्म मंतिक 
صرف و نحو اور علم معانی و البیان تفسیر حدیث یہ چیزیں آپ کو جہنم کی آگ سے نہیں بچا سکتی سوا ایک چیز کے اور وہ ہے تسکیہ نفس تسکیہ نفس ہوگا تو آپ جہنم سے بچ سکتے ہیں نہیں تو یہ مت سمجھے کہ میں نے دس سال پڑھا ہے بیس سال پڑھا ہے اتنی تفصیلیں میں نے پڑھی ہیں اور یہ یہ مجھے جہنم سے نہیں تسکیہ نفس ضروری ہے ایجوکیشن اینڈ ٹریننگ ایجوکیشن ود آؤٹ ٹریننگ از نتھنگ جی تفکر کا مطلب ہے سوچنا ٹو پونڈر ٹو تھنک اسی لیے حدیث میں کہا گیا کہ اتفکر و سا افضل من عبادت ستینہ سبع ستینہ سنہ بعض روایت میں ہے افضل من سبعینہ سنہ ایک گھنٹے کی تفکر ایک گھنٹے کی سوچ بچار انسان کے لیے ساٹھ سال کی عبادت سے بہتر ہے ستر سال کی عبادت سے بہتر ہے اگر وہ چند منٹ کی تفکر جناب ہر نہ کرتے اور یہ نہ سوچتے کہ میں کس کے ساتھ لڑ رہا ہوں ایک طرف امام حسین ہے فرزند رسول دوسری طرف یزید ہے بنی امیہ اور معاویہ اور ابو سفیان کی اولاد سے میں کس کے ساتھ لڑ رہا ہوں سید شباب اہل جنت کے ساتھ لڑ رہا ہوں اسی ایک ساتھ کی تفکر نے اس کی کہا پلٹ دی وہ پورا چینج ہو گیا اور جب جانے لگا کسی نے کہا کہ ابھی تو جنگ شروع نہیں ہوئی کہاں جا رہے ہو کہا کہ میں جنت کی طرف جا رہا ہوں جہنم کو چھوڑ کے جنت کی طرف جا رہا ہوں تسکی نفس کے لیے تفکر کرنا قرآن بار بار کہ تفکر کرو دیکھو افلا تنظر افلا ینظر کیف خل کا تم اونٹ کی طرف دیکھو کہ اللہ تعالیٰ نے اونٹ کو کیسے خل کیا فکر کرو تفکر اللہ تعالیٰ فرما اور پھر اون سے فوراً آسمان کی طرف وہ جبال پہاڑوں کی طرف دیکھو آسمان کی طرف زمین کی کیسے بچھا ہے جبال جو ہے پہاڑ اتنے بڑے بڑے بنائے بغیر ستون کے آسمان کو کھڑا کیا ان چیزوں پہ تفکر کرو یہ تسکیہ نفس کے لیے بہترین عمل جو ہے جو انسان کر سکتا ہے وہ یہی ہے کہ وہ اللہ کی بنائی ہوئی چیزوں پہ اپنے متعلق میں یہاں کیوں آیا میری ذمہ داری کیا ہے میں کس لیے بھیجا گیا مجھے کہاں جانا ہے مجھے کس کو جواب دینا ہے ان تمام چیزوں کی طرف تفکر کرنا تسکیہ نفس کے لیے دوسری چیز تسکیہ نفس کے لیے عبادت ہے عبادت سے بہت اثر پڑتا ہے اللہ کی عبادت اللہ کی عبادت کیا ہے گلوریفیکیشن ہے یعنی اللہ کی تصویر و تقدیس ہے یہ ہر حال میں ہونی چاہیے رات کو بھی ہونی چاہیے دوپہر میں اس لیے پانچ سو کی نماز فرض کی گئی ہے تاکہ انسان خافل نہ رہے ہمیشہ جو ہے اللہ کے ساتھ اس کا رابطہ رہے اور یہ اور بھی بہت سے ٹپس ہیں جو علماء اخلاق نے دیے ہیں تسکیہ نفس کے لیے آیت اللہ بیجت مجھے یہ شرف حاصل ہوا آیت اللہ بیجت کے پیچھے میں نے کئی مرتبہ ان کی مسجد مسجد فاطمہ سلام اللہ علیہ میں نمازیں پڑھی ہیں ہم نے ان کے پیچھے جب ہم طالب علم تھے یہ حرم سے تھوڑا آگے جو ہے گزرے خان کے پاس ان کی مسجد وہ نماز جیسی شروع کرتے تھے بسم اللہ رحمان رحیم گریا شروع ہو جاتا تھا ان کا نماز کے دوران اب ہمیں گریا نہیں آتا ہم گریا نہیں کرتے تو آیت اللہ بہجت جب نماز پڑھتے تھے وہ روتے تھے کیونکہ وہ سوچ کے اور جو پڑھ رہے ہیں اس پہ اس کی مینی کی طرف غور کر کے وہ نماز پڑھتے تھے تو وہ روتے تھے شروع کرتا ہوں اللہ کے نام سے جو بڑا رحمان اور رحیم ہے اچھا اللہ رحمان اور رحیم ہے پھر میں کیوں نا اس سے نا امید ہوں مایوس ہوں مایوسی گناہ ہے گناہ کبیرہ ہے وہ تو رحمان ہے رحیم ہے مجھے مایوس نہیں ہونا چاہیے اس طرح 
تفکر کر کے سوچ کے آغائے بہجت جو ہے ان کو رونا تھا آخر تک روتے تھے تو یہ ایک کنڈیشن ہے یہ ایک ملے کا انسان کو حاصل ہو جاتا جب وہ آیات کی طرف جو وہ پڑھ رہا ہے اذکار جو ذکر کر رہا ہے اس پہ وہ غور و فکر کرے یہ تسکیہ نفس اسے انسان کے اندر آتا ہے جزاک اللہ مولانا جزاک اللہ تھینک یو سو مچ مولانا اللہ آپ کو سلامت رکھے ان شاء اللہ سب کے ہمراہ ان شاء اللہ اللہ تعالیٰ آپ کو سلامت رکھے آپ علم حاصل کر رہے ہیں آپ سوال کر رہے ہیں عالم دین سے آدمی یہ تو وہ کو نہیں ہے کہ وہ عالم دین اس کو کوئی پیسے دے گا کوئی دولت دے گا کوئی کھانے کھلائے گا ادھر ادھر لیکن عالم دین سے ایک چیز انسان کو توقع رکھنی چاہیے اور وہ حاصل کرنا چاہیے وہ یہی ہے کہ وہ اسے علم حاصل کرے جو اس نے ٹائم لگایا ہے جو اس نے دیا ہے تو وہ لوگ اگر وہ حاصل کر لیتے ہیں تو انہوں نے عبادت کی ہے لہذا سیکھنا سکھانا یہ عبادت ہے عبادت کی قسم ہے آپ ماشاء اللہ گزشتہ ایک گھنٹے سے اس عبادت میں مشغول ہیں میں بھی اس عبادت میں مشغول ہوں اللہ تعالیٰ آپ کو سلامت رکھے آپ کے علم میں میرے علم میں اضافہ کرے اور اخلاص کے ساتھ عبادت کو انجام دینے کی توفیق عطا فرمائے خلوص سنسیئرٹی شرط ہے اگر کسی عمل میں اخلاص اور خلوص ہے اللہ تعالیٰ کو وہ عمل بہت پسند ہے جی مولانا بس اہل بیت علیہ السلام کے بعد آپ لوگوں کا احسانات ہے ہمارے ہوم پہ جو الحمد جی بے شک مولانا بے شک اللہ آپ لوگوں کو خوش رکھے اور ہر قسم سے محفوظ رکھے ان شاء اللہ ہر بلا و شر سے ان شاء اللہ آپ لوگوں کے درجات کو اللہ بلند کرے جزاک اللہ جزاک اللہ یادی جزاک اللہ یادی مدد اللہ سے اس کے عالم بندے ڈرتے ہیں علماء سے یا مراد نہیں ہے وہ شخص کہ جس کے سر پہ اماما ہو دوش پہ ردا ہو کبا پہنی ہو ابا ہو وہ عالم ضروری نہیں ہے کہ جس کے سر پہ اماما ہوگا ابا کبا ہوگی وہ عالم ہے یہاں پہ علماء جمع ہے عالم کی علماء سے مراد پڑھا لکھا آدمی چاہے اس نے ٹوپی پہنی ہے چاہے اس نے ٹوپی نہیں پہنی اماما پہنا ہے اماما نہیں پہنا لیکن اگر وہ جانتا ہے اور اس کے پاس علم ہے تو وہ عالم ہے لباس سے انسان عالم نہیں ہوتا لباس جو ہے اشارہ ہے اظہار ہے کہ یہ شخص صاحب علم ہے اور یہ لیکن ضروری نہیں ہے کہ ہر ابا کبا والا امامے والا شخص عالم ہی ہو لہذا یہاں پہ ارشاد ہو رہا ہے کہ اللہ تعالیٰ سے اس کے عالم بندے جو علم رکھتے ہیں وہ ڈرتے ہیں اب ظاہر ہے اگر کوئی شخص عالم نہیں ہے جاہل ہے وہ اللہ سے کیسے ڈرے گا ڈرنے کے لیے شرط یہ ہے کہ آپ کو آگاہی ہو اب مجھے پتہ ہی نہیں ہے ایک بچہ جو ہے وہ سام کے ساتھ کھیلتا ہے چھوٹا بچہ ایک سال کا دو سال کا سام آتا ہے یہ اس کو پکڑنے کی کوشش کرتا ہے اب کوئی اس سے پوچھے کہ یہ تم کیا کھیل رہے ہو یہ تو بڑا خطرناک ہے ابھی سام تم کو کاٹ دے گا اس میں تو زہر ہے لیکن بچے کو تو علم ہی نہیں ہے وہ تو عالم نہیں ہے نہ اس کے پاس یہ معلومات ہیں کہ یہ زہریلا ہے وہ تو اس کو خوبصورت کیڑا سمجھ کے اس کے ساتھ کھیل رہا ہے تو یہ جو فرماتے ہیں کہ جو شخص علماء ہیں جن کے پاس علم ہے حقیقت میں وہی اللہ سے ڈرتے ہیں یکشا ڈرنے کو کہتے ہیں خوف بھی ڈرنے کو کہتے ہیں شاید اس میں تھوڑا بہت فرق ہو لیکن ظاہری طور پہ عوام کے لیے دونوں کا مطلب سیم ہے فیئر فیئر ٹو اسکیئر اللہ سے اس کے پڑھے لکھے بندے ڈر جاہل نہیں ڈرتے اللہ سے اور یہ جو خشیت ہے یا خوف ہے یہ تقریباً سیم ہے تھوڑا بہت مفہوم میں فرق ہو سکتا ہے لیکن مین مفہوم اس کا یہی ہے سیم یہ ایک ہی معنی کے دو الفاظ ہیں یعنی جس کے پاس علم ہو اس کے پاس خشیت اور خوف اس کا ظاہر کرے گا 
अगर उसके पास खशियत ना है नहीं है अगर दावे इल्म है तो वो आलिम नहीं है उनके वो ऐसा ही है बिल्कुल आलिम की शर्त यह है कि उसके पास इल्म हो उसके पास खौफ इलाही हो उसके पास अमल हो क्योंकि हदीस में है कि अल आलिम बिला अमल का शजर बिला समर आलिम अगर अमल नहीं करता तो ऐसे दरख्त की तरह है कि जो फल नहीं देता तो अमल शर्त है इल्म शर्त है तकवा शर्त है उस पर अखलास शर्त है अगर ये तमाम चीजें होंगी इल्म होगा तो खौफ खुदा होगा अगर ये चीजें नहीं है तो फिर खौफ खुदा नहीं है लिहाजा इल्म हासिल करो ताकि तुम अल्लाह से डरो थैंक यू सो मच एवरी वन अप्रिशिएट यूर ज्वाइनिंग सो विल कंटिन्यू विद आर नेचुरल बल्ला सेशन ऑन नेक्स्ट संडे रैप दिस अप हियर with the durood allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ali see you next week thank you shukriya yunus bhai tamam doston ka jinhone is isko join kiya allah taala ko salamat rakhe fi amanillah khuda fi assalam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaikum assalam bhai ali madad